Hi, my name is Anna Galletley, and I am your AMP2 Lab instructor, or at least the one doing the videos for AMP2 Lab. Um, we are starting with the very first one. Everything in this particular unit, or this particular video, is a review from AMP1. So I just want to quickly go over some of these terms and refresh your memory on them. All right, in the structure of the PowerPoints, I do a lot of note slides. And this is going to help you um, try to get some emphasis on what to, to remember and what to focus on throughout um, the course. Um, this particular slide, I'm giving you landmarks that I know we're going to be talking about in AMP2. So you should go back and refresh your memory on what all of these things mean and be able to point to them on your own body. All right, anatomical position. Um, again, very important. You should have this already down from AMP1 lab an AMP1 lecture, but you absolutely must know anatomical position and you must be able to do it without thinking. It is one of the most important things you will need to know in this lab. All right, so when you're looking at your patient or your cadaver or the other person, always use their right and left, okay? You will notice that the palms are anterior, the feet are flat on the ground, okay? Um, and whenever you talk about the body, you need to talk about it in anterior position, okay? Even if they're not in anterior position, you describe it as if it is. All right, orientation terminology. Um, you've got the anterior side of the body versus the posterior side of the body. Remember your synonyms of dorsal and ventral, okay? So with dorsal, what I try to remember is a fin on the back. That's a terrible fin, but... Maybe I'll do a better fin, shark fin on the back, because the dorsal fin is on the back of the shark, okay? All right, when you're dealing with superior and inferior, looking at things going towards the head for its superior and towards the feet for inferior, we do, again, have uh, synonyms, okay? You've got... Um, rostral and caudal. We don't tend to use those very much, sometimes, especially rostral, but we'll sometimes use caudal, okay? Um, technically, anything on the body can be used with superior and inferior, but we're going to get to proximal and distal, I think, on the next slide, so let's talk about that there. Nope, actually, we're going to do medial and lateral first. Medial is towards the midline, all right, which should be fairly easy for everyone. All right, and then distal, excuse me, lateral is away from the midline, okay? Again, whenever you're using these terms, it's always in relationship to each other, okay? So you don't say something like um, the nipple is lateral because you don't know what it's lateral to. So you could say it's lateral to the sternum or you can say it's medial to the axilla, okay? So it's always in relationship. All right, now we're going to get to proximal and distal. The first thing I want you to remember is that proximal and distal are used only with the arms and legs, okay? Proximal means in proximity to something, whereas distal means distant or further away from something. So everything that's proximal is going towards the torso. Everything that's distal is going away from the torso. Now, you need to use this with arms and legs. Technically, you can use superior and inferior, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use proximal and distal because those are the better terms to use with those appendages. Okay? We will use proximal and distal as well for some of our organs, like to describe how the duodenum, part of the intestines, is distal to the stomach. Okay? So these are really, 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 really important terms for you to know. Um, ipsilateral, which I've just written over, and contralateral, ipsi means um, same, contra means opposite, so opposite side versus same side. All right, here we've got some other ones like cephalic, rostral, and caudal. Um, you'll need to know superficial and deep in particular for A and P2 because we're going to be talking about organs. So superficial is closer to the surface. Whereas deep, you're going deep. You're going into an organ or structure. All right, so here's a place where you can practice drawing your regional terms to the different body parts. So this is a nice little activity for you to do on um, your tablet or on a, you can print it out and do it on paper as well. But you should practice all of these. 
All right, a refresher on your planes. So what you will see right here is they're showing you the frontal plane or the coronal plane. I tend to use the word coronal because I come out of osteology. Um, frontal is often used in medical um, places as well. So frontal is referring to the bone, whereas coronal is referring to the suture. What you need to know about these is it's dividing the body into anterior versus posterior segments. So if you cut the nose off, it's in the coronal plane, okay? The sagittal right here, all right, you'll notice that that is dividing the body into right and left, or sometimes talked about in terms of medial versus lateral, okay? And then the transverse plane is right here in orange, and this one does superior versus inferior or proximal versus distal. When we start digging into the body and we start bisecting organs or structures in order to look at them, these planes become particularly important. So practice these terms and make sure you're good with them. All right, here's a nice picture showing you how we're gonna be using these planes as we study A and P2. So you'll notice the sagittal plane dividing into right and left. In this case, it's a mid-sagittal section so that you can see the uterus, the bladder, and the rectum, okay? The frontal plane, this is like you've sliced off the entire front of the body so that you can see the front of the lungs and the heart, okay? And then here's a transverse section I find these visually, for me, the hardest to wrap my brain around, but basically this is your superior inferior. And basically they've cut off the top of the head going through your eyeballs so that you can see like the cerebellum, the brain stem, and then the cerebrum here and here. And you can see part of the nasal, um, the sinuses in here. Okay. All right. Next slide. All right, a refresher on your body cavities. Again, you, you do need to know these and be able to do them without thinking about it, okay? So remember that you're gonna divide the body up into a dorsal body cavity versus a ventral body cavity. So ventral is the anterior, dorsal, oops, there's an S missing, is the um, posterior. The dorsal is pretty easy in that it only contains the cranial and vertebral cavities where you've got the brain and the spinal cord, okay? The ventral is more complicated in that you can divide it into the thoracic, abdominal, I'm going to abbreviate those because my handwriting is terrible anyway, and the pelvic, okay? And then within the thoracic cavity, you can further divide it into the pleural, the mediastinum, and the pericardial cavities, the abdominal and pelvic cavity are sometimes combined to be the abdominal pelvic, okay? Now, between the thoracic and the abdominal, you'll remember from A and P1, we have a nice boundary line created by the um, diaphragm muscle. The pelvic and abdominal cavities, you've got an imaginary line at the ASIS, so the anterior superior iliac spine, okay? So you need to go back and review these body cavities and make sure you're good on them. All right, from A and P1, review your nine abdominal pelvic regions. All right, so this is what I call the tic-tac-toe board. Okay, just know them. All right, I actually prefer the quadrant system, which we'll look at on the next slide. All right, we will be using these quadrants as we talk about the abdominal and pelvic organs. So know your right upper, your right lower, left upper, and left lower. And the reason we do that is we can talk about how if we're dealing with pain in the right upper quadrant, we could um, basically rule out that the appendix is a problem or the rectum is a problem because those are down in here. And instead, maybe we're dealing with the liver gallbladder or, or something else, okay? All right, review from A&P1. You have three covering membranes. You need to know all of them. You need to know how they are formed. So you've got the serous, the mucus, and the cutaneous, okay? The serous is gonna be in the body cavities, okay? In the ventral body cavity specifically, okay? 
mucus lines tubes, okay? Um, and then cutaneous is skin. These will always have two layers, epithelium and connective tissue proper, okay? Usually a realer, but not always, okay? Um, because they have these two tissues, they are considered a simple organ, okay? Sometimes there is a third layer of muscle, all right? Smooth muscle, sometimes. Okay, so you need to review that histology and those structures. All right, so in the uh, ventral body cavity, we're going to change the name of the serosa to pericardium if it's around the heart, pleura if it's around the lung, peritoneum if it's in the abdominal pelvic cavity. And then with the peritoneum, we'll eventually get into this. We have specialized types called mesentery, greater omentum, and lesser omentum, and we'll get into that eventually. Now, lining tubes like your blood vessels, your lymphatic vessels, the inside of your um, intestines, those are going to be mucosa, okay? So know the difference between the two and know that we're really going to be focusing on both of them in this particular lab. All right, so that's the end of part A, and you can go on to part B, which is going to be talking about the, um, the blood cells.